Michael Sawgrass, and in this episode of The World Around Us, we're doing a virtual lab, a heat exchange virtual lab, and uh, we'll have the three parts. We'll have how you do it, in case you're gonna do it in class, you just need to see the, the mechanics. And then we're gonna do the experiment, collect the data, and then we'll have a results section where we will talk about the data and do the calculations and all that. So what we have is a, uh, a, some, some metal samples which are going to get hot in the boiling water. And then we have uh, a thermometer and we have a calorimeter which is a, a styrofoam calorimeter with a styrofoam lid. We have some tongs with which to move the metal samples around. Something to record paper and pencil. Over here we have uh, a, a, another beaker that we're going to use to practice putting the metal sample in because if you drop the metal sample from up high and hit, that just seems like a really bad idea. So we want to make sure that we know how to manipulate our different metal samples which surprisingly over the years has, has proven not to be as, as intuitive and as simple as necessary. Back there is a scale because we have to weigh everything. We're going to have to find the masses of everything. And then we have the gloves, which I don't know what they're for, but I thought, you know, it's hot stuff and maybe safety gloves would come into play. There's also some tongs for moving the beaker around. So it's a fairly simple apparatus, okay? All right, what are we going to do? The procedures are... We have to find the mass of the water because the math says energy loss is equal to energy gained. So that's going to be Q equals MC delta T for the water and Q equals MC delta T for the metal sample, whichever one we choose to do. In order to find the mass of the water, we have to find the mass of the cup, then put some water in it, find the mass of the cup and the water, and then subtract, and that will give us the mass of just the water. So if the cup is two grams, and then you put water in it, and it's 52 grams, then you have got exactly 50 grams of water. That's probably not gonna happen. We're gonna get, you know, decimals. Um, then we're gonna find the mass of the sample, because we need the mass of the sample. The, the ultimate goal is to calculate the specific heat of the metal sample, and we could use that. We could go and look on a chart and make a prediction as to which metal it is, all right? So that's the setup. What it's gonna look like is taking the metal sample, going to the scale. Ninety-nine point nine three. Ninety-nine point nine three. That's the mass of the metal sample. We'll go get some water. We'll get the mass of the cup. Two point zero six. Now I'm going to put some water in the cup. Hundred twenty-two point six four. All right. So the mass of the cup, the mass of the water, subtract, and that's going to give me the mass of the water only. I'm going to subtract that. Then um, I'm going to get the initial temperature of the sample. Now the, the initial temperature of the sample is going to be the initial temperature, whatever the temperature of the water is in which the sample is placed for a, a, few, a few moments. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it in. Uh, but first I want to practice, make sure I can actually manipulate my sample. If you've not done this, if you've not played with samples and tongs, so I'm going to be very careful not to hit the thermometer. I'm going to place this in, and then I'm going to pick it out in a little while once it has heated up. I'm going to record the initial temperature of the water and the, the, boiling, um, the boiling water and the, the metal sample. So that's going to be T sub I. I'm going to record the initial temperature of this water, and that will be the T sub I on the gain side. So this is the loss, um, and then I will then be able to calculate when I put them together a final temperature that will be our T sub F, and from the TITF I will be able to calculate a delta T. Now 
using the delta T and the M and all of that, the heat gained equals heat loss. So I got M, I'll have the specific heat of water. We know that is 4.128 joules per gram. And we're going to calculate the specific heat of the sample. And that's, that's, the, that's the lab. So we'll have heat loss, MC delta T, equals heat gained, MC delta T. We'll have the mass of the water. We'll have the specific heat of the water. We'll have the delta T of the water. Multiply those. That gives us the heat loss. Then we're going to have the mass and the, and the, and the temperature change of the sample. Multiply those times C equals that other number. Then we'll divide and that'll give us C. So the math is, is relatively pretty simple. The, the whole experiment is, is relatively pretty simple. While this is heating up, I want to I want to talk about the calorimeter because the calorimeter has an initial temperature, an initial mass, and a uh, uh, specific heat. It is also going to gain water. And then there's this little lid thing. Now, it's not going to gain water. It's going to gain energy. However, the mass is so small, 2.06, and it's made of styrofoam, which doesn't conduct or absorb energy very, very readily. So it, it is going to be a negligible factor. We're going to ignore it. And, and you know, I've said in other videos, you know, we're not, we're not making pharmaceuticals here. We're, we're, we're finding out how much this 100 gram piece of metal, what its specific heat is. But so considering the mass of the water is, is around 120 and the mass of the sample is around 100 and the mass of the cup is 2. So it is a very small percentage of the, of the process. So we can ignore that. All right, so that is the setup. That's the setup. So we have the, the uh, pick one of our samples. We have water in the cup that we know the mass of the water. We know the, we know the mass of the cup. We know the mass of the cup and the water. We have a thermometer we're going to use to take the initial temperature with. We have a thermometer over here. We're going to collect the initial temperature with that. Uh, we have the metal sample in the hot water so that it is acquiring the same temperature as the water around it. We are ready, we're ready to do this. All right, so those of you who are doing this as in class, that's the setup. It's really pretty simple. The big safety consideration is don't touch the hot plate. Don't touch the hot glass. Don't touch the hot thermometer. Don't touch the hot metal sample. Use the tongs that are provided. All right, that's, that's the setup. So if you're doing this as an in-class experiment, get back here or wherever your, back, wherever your lab is, uh, go do it. Now we'll, we'll collect the data in the next part. All right, so if you are doing the virtual lab, you're still watching, you want to collect the data from the video. And we already have collected a, a few pieces of the data. We have the mass of the sample. We don't know the specific heat of the sample, but that's what we're going to be looking for. Um, we, have the mass of, we have the mass of the cup, and we have the mass of the cup and water. If I subtract those numbers, that will give me the mass of the water. 122, turn it on, 122.64 minus 2.06. That gives me the mass of the water at 120.58. Simple enough. I'm going to take now the initial temperature of the water. Let the thermometer sit for a long enough period of time for the thermometer to you know, acquire the, the temperature of the water. It's not instantaneous. But since the water is in the room and the thermometer was in the room and the room has a, a temperature, the, the water temperature is going to be pretty close to room temperature. So while this, while this gets to a, a, a final reading, uh, we'll go over here and we'll, we'll grab the temperature off of this one uh, and because it seems to have, have reached and, and it is the temperature of the, of the water is at it is at 98. So the initial temperature of the metal sample, the initial temperature will be 98 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> we're going to call this one, we're going to call this one. We call this 18. We're going to call this 18 degrees Celsius. So the initial temperature of the water is 18, and the initial temperature of the metal sample is 98. 
Now I'm going to take the thermometer out and I'm going to make sure to get as much of the water off of it as is reasonably possible because that water is part of the experiment. And we would like to have as accurate results as we can within the limitations of our equipment. All right, so I'm going to take the sample from the beaker with its initial temperature of 98. I want, I want to get as much of the water off of it as I can and then quickly move it into my calorimeter. I'm going to put the cap on it and let it sit for some few minutes. Let's say three minutes. See what the temperature is at that point. All right, a little bit of time has passed, and we're, we're going to conclude that the, the hot sample and the water are now the same temperature. It's been about two or three minutes. I'm just let it sit. And I'm going to put the thermometer in and see if, if the temperature has reached a, a, final, a final temperature point. We'll let this sit for another minute or so as the thermometer uh, comes to the temperature of the mixture. So the indicator in the thermometer has, has ceased to rise, it's no longer going up, and reading that, reading that number, um, I'm reading it as, I'm reading it as 22 degrees. So I'm reading, I'm reading the final temperature as 22 degrees, alright? So final temperature, 22. Now, they both have the same final temperature because they're in there together. All right, that is the data collection. And so we have the mass of the sample, 99.93, the mass of the water, 120.58, initial temperature of the sample, 98 degrees, initial temperature of the water, 18 degrees, final temperature of the sample, 22 degrees, final temperature of the water, also 22 degrees. We're ready to go do our calculations now. We're ready to go do our calculations. So we will, uh, if you're watching the video just to get the data, if you're doing the, your conclusion and results on your own, stop your video now, go get your paper out, do your calculations, write up the discussion and the conclusion. And the link to the lab sheet is uh, in the description, in the video description. All right, we have all of our data. We are ready to do our calculations and come up with our conclusion. Um, and so, so here we go. 98 minus 22. Uh, of course, you'll, here's the, it's over here. There's the, the numbers. 98 minus 22 is 76. 18, 22 minus 18 is 4. All right, what well, looks like this is Q lost equals Q gained. Q is MC delta T. MC, which we're looking for, delta T equals MC delta T. We have all that. Mass, 99.93 times C times 76 equals 120.58 times 4.128 times 4. Calculator. 99.93 times 76 equals 7,594.68, and this is joules per gram. This is all joules and grams. Uh, C times, or equals, clear, 120.58 times 4.128 times 4 equals. 1991.01696, we'll call that 0. 0.0. We'll call that 0. 0.7.
This number divided by this number equals C. 199.99. 199, 199.0 divided by 7,594.7. 1991 divided by 7594.7 is 0 0.26215. The calculated specific heat of the sample is 026215. Now, obviously, we've carried the, the numbers out beyond the allowable significant figures, but it, it gives us you know, the, the accuracy, accuracy of the calculator, not the accuracy of the instruments. When we go to a table, if we were to want to look this up, we're going to see several decimal places calculated for the, the given the known specific heats of different samples. So in the discussion section of the video, the question is, is, is based on the specific heat that you calculated, what possibly could be the type of metal? And you'll have to, you'll have to go find the specific heat chart, um, and there's lots and lots of them on the internet. On the internet. Use that specific heat chart and, and see. Now here's, here's a, a, a pro tip for you. In years past, I've had people calculate their specific heat, and they have said, oh, it, must be, it must be nitrogen. Nitrogen is a gas. Uh, I had another person, they had platinum, and that's obviously not platinum. And then another, I had another year, someone had plutonium. They had, they had 100 grams of plutonium in their calorimeter. So use, that's the discussion thing. You have to use your common sense. It's not just the specific heat, but it is also the physical characteristics of the sample and the, the properties that are otherwise observed. Does it, is it magnetic? Is it, a, is it even a metal? Is it, it's obviously not nitrogen because nitrogen is a gas. So that would be uh, for your discussion section. All right, so there's your, there's your uh, experiment. Hopefully you're still watching. You, um, you have completed your conclusion. You have, you have your um, discussion ready to go. That's it. That's all for this episode. Boy, there were some outtakes. You know, there are sometimes, sometimes there are outtakes. Thank you for watching. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, sign up for notifications, leave me a comment, question, or a suggestion. We're going to do another, we're going to do another uh, heat exchange lab. So watch for that. We're going to do hot liquid cold. This is how this is how I'm able to drink my coffee in the morning. I put cold liquid into my hot coffee, and then the temperature gets to a yeah. Let's think about that one. That'll be interesting. Still be energy lost equals heat gained. All that same same thing. Watch for that video. Watch for that video. It will be forthcoming. See you. See you in the next episode. While this is doing its thing, this has been boiling for a little while. I have no idea what the camera's focused on. What is the camera focused on? Do I have to do this over again? The camera is not focused. It's focused on the wall in the back of the room. So the sample has a temperature of 98. Likewise, I'm going to drop it on my calculator. Let it heat back up. I don't, I don't want the calculator to absorb any of the energy. What in the world?